So welcoming here now, John and Alpa, over to you. Take the stage, please. Uh, Diraj, uh, thank you very much. So I'm switching from being an MC to being a presenter now. Um, I'm going, I'm very pleased to um, present to you about the benefits of APIs in wealth management. I'm going to share our screen just here so we can get started. So, uh, as I said, welcome. I'm because we're going to talk about risk management. Uh, I've uh, I've invited my my co-director Alpha Parak, uh, who's, who's very uh, who specialises in risk management, to uh, to share with you how you how we address the um, the risks of, of APIs as well as reaping the benefits, particularly in wealth management. Thank you, John, for inviting me to speak at this API based conference. I'm very honored to be part of it, my very first conference here. I enjoy risk management and I'm excited to share my knowledge of risks, um, mitigations in relation to APIs and wealth management. Technology in general, as you know, can reduce some risk, but it can also increase in risk if it's not managed properly. Um, it can be an enabler to growing wealth and growing revenue and growing and reducing costs. I believe wealth management is one of the key industries that can help people grow and protect the wealth to enable them to achieve their dreams. So digital transformation. In this presentation, we'll talk about digital, digital transformation with a focus on APIs in each stage of the client life cycle in the wealth management industry. We'll show you the client life cycle. We will share our, our opinion of how incumbent wealth managers can quickly adopt and be part of this digital transformation. Lastly, we'll share our knowledge of risks that need to be managed to preserve reputation, be compliant with the regulations, and avoid or minimize your financial losses. But, but before, sorry. To set the scene, we will talk about the threats and opportunities in wealth management. As you know, technology has disrupted payments, foreign exchange, trade financing, and other areas of financial sectors in the past couple of decades. However, incumbent wealth managers have generally been slower in adopting new technology, as wealth management is generally considered for the relationship business. With recent advances in technology such as APIs, global advisors, Artificial intelligence, barriers to entry and lowering, and making it easy for new entrants, thus driving incumbent wealth managers to either adopt new technologies or be overtaken. Technology allows for providers to offer services at low investment fees to mass affluent clients. Further, there are significant shifts happening in investor demographics. Population around the world is living longer. Mammalia, mammalia, Millennials. Millennials. <laughs> Sorry. Millennials are early adopters of latest technology and generally they want consistent information across platforms and ease of access via mobile phones. Women are making families financial decisions based on new investment tools and platforms. Current low interest rates across all countries, along with increasing cost of meeting. Compliance requirements is also squeezing profit margins for wealth managers. So what can incumbent wealth managers do to increase revenue and reduce costs and to be competitive? Let me just check the audio for a moment. Uh, is that audio better? Uh, okay, I, I think uh, we need to speak okay. up a little okay. bit more. Okay. okay. Um, well, incumbent wealth managers can change traditional business model and adopt, say, robo-advisors. I'm sure you've heard of many companies already doing robo-advisory. Adopt new technologies such as application programming interface, which can bring richer information to client conversations by tapping into resources within the firm and from external sources for more holistic and informed decisions. We believe there are six key phases of client lifecycle. 
And today we'll share how incumbent wealth management firms can also benefit from APIs across these phases. Recently, NASDAQ published top 10 trends in API, sorry, in wealth management. And one of the trends noted was adoption of open APIs. So this is the view of the wealth management ecosystem. On the left-hand side, we've got investors who have money and want to invest, intermediaries who have knowledge and can provide investment advice um, to the investors. But they also need to get data from the exchange providers. Finally, we can't forget the regulators. The regulators are very, very big in every industry, particularly in financial services. They want to know and they want to understand wealth managers' risk management framework, policies, and require reports on how the advice is being provided. And later we'll talk about some more details about it. Just from this picture, you can visualize open, open APIs and private APIs that can be used to obtain and provide data and analytics APIs for data analysis and insights. Right, right. Just, just a, another comment on this. So earlier today in the industry stage, uh, Samar Sen from Deutsche Bank gave a good uh, perspective on custodial services. Uh, so. That, that presentation is over, but be sure to look for the, the recording of that um, because you gave a great insight to the counterparties and, and how that custodial services work. So this is just to give you a view of the six phases of the client life cycle I was talking about, and we'll touch upon these, specifically talk about the benefits of APIs and risks to manage across these client life cycles. So the first phase of client life cycle Client acquisition and engagement. So before a wealth manager can meet a client to see if, if they can offer services, the wealth manager needs to have a sample portfolio ready to show to the to, to entice and show the client. The portfolio needs to be a wide ranging uh, with products, with analysis, and perhaps even an application of, of the wealth manager to demonstrate to the client what they can do for them. In order to create the portfolio, Wealth managers need to source data either directly going to the exchanges, which we have shown on the right hand side, which can be quite time consuming and lots of APIs involved, or they can go to um, someone like Bloomberg, Refinitiv, or Mixit. Data such as equities and fixed income research, forex strategy, historical rate of return of various assets, and more can be drawn using APIs and presented in a logical manner to the client. Client acquisition phase is very important to convince the client whether they want to invest in you or not. So to get this right is very important. And APIs can simplify the connection between information consumers, such as wealth manager and clients, and their providers, such as the exchanges or Bloomberg's. So using technology can help. Wealth managers can choose to develop some tools themselves, such as calculators or simulators, or gather data from external reliable sources to save time, costs, and free up resources to then spend more time in acquisition, new product development, and improve their services. Clients engage with both managers to grow and protect them. They seek advice, require transparency, access across markets globally, and a trusted relationship. This is very important. So let's look at some of the risks um, around this particular phase of client life cycle. It's very important that at the, at the planning and the design phase of the APIs, risks are already sort of thought of and managed to ensure that the API is designed for sharing needed information only. I'm sure you've heard of, you know, um, Equifax that had open um, access and there was a breach of a lot of data, um, which I'll put in a clip there. And then Cambridge Analytica had, uh, had another scandal as well um, with Facebook, that I'm sure you've heard of that. Collecting too much information or not enough information or incorrect data fields can lead to incorrect analysis, leading to operational, reputational, or possibly financial risks. Frequency of data collection needs to be agreed as well with the third party provider. Finally, I would say check the API design for any possible hacks and what it exposes. Testing the data collected for accuracy and completeness is important. 
Certainly, because uh, you're only as good as the data that you collect, and if you collect it from the wrong source or if it's um, too late, uh, then if it's much later than uh, it needs to be in order to make a, a good decision, then, then it actually works against you. So yeah, it's, it's not good enough to have uh, just a good API. You have to think about who is providing the service behind that, that API um, and where where is the information coming from and what has happened to it along the way. Yeah, trusted relationship again with the clients. Now, let's look at access to third-party providers. Nowadays, a lot of companies in a lot of areas are using third-party providers. So in this instance, I'd like to say that it's so it's really really key to ensure that um, providers SSL certification is valid you need to check for that data is encrypted across the internet you don't want it to be hacked always authenticate the users it doesn't matter how many times you've been um, to that particular third party provider you wouldn't just allow anybody else coming into into your into your homes and this next one is something that one of the keynote speakers mentioned yesterday Jed in um, it's important to validate. API key validation is, is quite important to ensure the right polling project is not done. Data governance is another important thing. Clarity around who owns the data, who's the owner of this data. Is it technology? Is it business? This is something that businesses face all the time. Need to ensure that there is clarity around roles and responsibilities, protecting the data at rest, in transit, and storing the data. A lot of countries have different regulations about how long the data needs to be retained and also cross-border use and storage of their citizens' data. China, for example, Indonesia, and so on. Ensure there is strict tracking and access monitoring of the API key. This is back to you know, API key validation and ensuring it's the right key. And any updates made to an API design should go through proper governance process. Too. So that comes back also to the data management life cycle. Uh, so there was a speaker yesterday from, from Talon talking about the end to end uh, data journey and um, making sure that uh, not only is data collected, but it, it is managed along the way and changes to that data are managed along the way. So um, risk covers that whole, um, that, that whole life cycle of where where data originates, how it's conveyed through different stages within a source organization, and also from that third party to the, the wealth management mm -hmm. and on, 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 on to, uh, to the client. So we'll move on to the client onboarding phase now, which is the second phase of the client life cycle. Now, when onboarding a client, as you can imagine, wealth manager needs to take a lot of steps. To ensure the client is reliable and um, client identity verification is done. Obtain name, beneficial owners. You have to do conduct AML KYC check, uh, political, a politically exposed uh, persons check, funding sources, then create client account in the core systems and provision client account. So there are a lot of checks to be done and you can't compromise any of those because companies have been faced with uh, compliance fines which i'll share with you later on in later slides there's um, there's also this work also takes a lot of time so by the time a, a customer comes in to the point that uh, that you onboard the client it could take anywhere between some companies could take uh, three weeks that's pretty fast some companies can take three months so you want to try and avoid taking too long, obviously, but you have to do all the checks properly. So digitized forms can actually help. So one of the things is, you know, client actually uh, puts on, puts their personal data in digitized forms, and you can use APIs or RPAs to extract the information. And um, the banks also, I mean, if they have bank, clients have bank accounts, then um, the, the wealth management private banking side may have the authority to access data on the account side so that might speed up the process as well and then as mentioned before you need to have an agreed methodology in place on what client data you need and how it is stored best to have a single database as a source of truth and then use apis to call on the information as needed 
Now, if you move on to uh, uh, just just some logos you see on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, so yesterday. Uh, our keynote speaker, Kendrick Lee, from uh, Singapore's Government Technology Agency, talked about the MyInfo uh, service, which is available in Singapore uh, for onboarding uh, clients to, to banks and, and insurance companies. It rides on the top of the national digital identity, uh, the, the SingPass. A similar scheme is, uh, is uh, taking shape in, in India with, with India Stack mm -hmm. and um, um, Prasant um, uh, Putinvedo will be speaking on that later today uh, about uh, the, the regulations in India for uh, enable account aggregation. Uh, Alpa mentioned also gaining um, information from banks. Well, that's that's the, that the core of uh, open banking, but the the consent mechanisms required yeah. for gaining. Uh, for a customer, a client, allowing uh, a bank to Operation. share their information uh, with with the uh, with, with the wealth manager, but many of these these checks also need to be global. So, uh, with the current state of, of being even in countries that have a strong national digital identity and mechanism like MyInfo for sharing data about what the Singapore government has uh, on on a client, uh, there are also necessary uh, checks to make on, on the global um, sanctions politically exposed persons and um, and counterterrorism uh, funding aspects so there isn't one um, there, there isn't one solution that uh, that deals with everything you need to uh, go to several different different bureaus that, uh, that can aid that and and in countries that don't have a, a national digital identity, then you start to look for other forms of, uh, of identification. And this is what um, companies like Trulio and, and, and Juno do. Like you can have uh, sanctions of certain countries or individuals versus US. So you just need to go to several sources to make sure that you have the right information to do your checks. So we'll move on to um, risk management around client onboarding. Now, one of the things um, to note is, you know, digitized forms are great, but the APIs and the digitized forms need to make sure that any regulatory changes that are occurring, um, these forms are updated, APIs are updated, or if they're using RPA, that's also updated. So therefore you're, you're uh, extracting the right data from the form to put into your database to then do the analysis. Um, now, consistent collecting is important and storing of client data. Um, we mentioned storing client data earlier already. Um, the, the last thing I want to sort of reiterate here is sort of when engaging with third-party service provider, monitor the movement of data from internal to external systems and keep the encryption key updated. When wealth, when wealth managers need to ensure agreements with third-party service providers gives them the right to know how the client data is used stored and protected because ultimately it is your data that the third party has and you are held accountable in front of a regulator okay so we'll move on to the next phase of the client life cycle which is investment analysis and advice now this is the i consider this an exciting phase but also a bit of a scary phase because um, wealth managers get information from you know, um, the clients as intermediaries, they get information from um, data providers like exchanges and so on. This is the point where all the data, you know, knowledge by the client, the right fit, fit the suitability, all of this comes into play. So um, the, the more technology you can leverage on and then spend time on analysis, the, the better it is to get the right asset selection um, so that um, you know, the clients are able to select the right portfolio that fits their risk profile. There are two type, main types of APIs that a wealth manager can use, and yeah. John can elaborate. So um, much of the API world is, is accustomed to the, to the REST API and, uh, style, and that is probably the most common way of, of accessing data about potential investments. But when it comes to the timeliness of information, we're finding a lot of investment managers are looking for um, more um, 
more uh, updated, more more real time information about changes in invest investment values. So they um, so you're seeing a more of a move to uh, to event driven architectures uh, to um, to wealth managers subscribing to uh, real time updates uh, in uh, in valuations. Okay. Um, so the, well, some of the risks that we need to look at. Um, in investment analysis and advice, and I mentioned that it's a bit of a, this is kind of a, an exciting phase of investment analysis and advice, but at the same time, it's a little bit scary as well. As you can see, some of the fines that have been slapped uh, in, in the past decade or so, uh, and, and the big names that have been slapping and the amount of money people have, uh, companies have spent on fines, mis-selling. So regulators are very serious about mis-selling to the clients. Segregation of the roles of sales from advisors is important. You know, um, and consider compensation rates. Some of the regulators think that if there is higher variable compensation than fixed compensation, then the advisors and the salespeople are more incentivized to sell whatever they can. Um, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Um, finally, client approvals should be captured for any advice given, risks explained, and portfolio selected. Now, from from a technology perspective, you know, keep your robo advisors mentioned this before. Uh, artificial intelligence models, APIs, and RPAs updated for the latest regulations. APIs can increase efficiency, reduce manual errors of data collection, which reduces the risk. So that's a good thing, it's a positive thing. Um, and then be aware of fund managers that offer higher than market return, rendering it as a potential Ponzi scheme. I think everybody knows about Madoff and the Ponzi scheme. Um, so it's really important to be aware of that. Yeah. So let's move on to the fourth phase of client lifecycle, order execution. Now, look, wealth managers can connect directly to the exchanges. Again, I mentioned this before, that means lots of APIs, or they can go via a broker. Uh, brokers can help sort of consolidate you know, their access to various uh, exchanges. APIs are increasingly used for order um, confirmation as well. Um, so when the order is placed, um, you get confirmation back. Um, you know, APIs can be quite uh, handy for that. In order execution phase, there are certain risks that need to be managed to ensure right order is placed and executed. Finally, have a process in place around handling errors and ensuring settlement. If there are any settlement issues, then it, they're, they're resolved. APIs are not going to do that for you. So you need to have um, humans um, looking at that information and quickly sort of handle the orders change. You know, the whole, often you know, buy versus sell, right, right, wrong size, wrong price executed, which can cost the company money. Now, if you move on to the fifth phase, which is the portfolio management and reporting, we call it portfolio management, but also portfolio monitoring. Um, you can use analytics APIs to do mark-to-mark -mark evaluation of your portfolios. So clients have the latest asset value on their apps, but it also helps wealth manager understand if portfolio rebalancing is required. So say, for example, in the advice space, uh, you've advised a client to select certain asset for the portfolio based on their risk client's risk profile and risk appetite. Now, there's a significant shift in market the portfolio is dipping significantly, then you know, maybe maybe another product that is similar or in another market that can be added into the portfolio, removing the, the ones that is uh, that is not uh, performing really well. But this is complicated. I'm, I'm simplifying at the moment, but there are, it's, it's very complicated to do. But you know, rebalancing is important, and, and if that service is offered, that's that's great so that the client portfolio is managed to meet client's risk profile profile and risk appetite level. Ensure that you communicate with the client if the changes are made, it is important. And, and there's an agreed process and document, agreed and documented process in place for rebalancing methodology. Yeah? So it's consistent across portfolios. Um, there are other risks to be managed, such as ensuring new algorithms that you use to analyze the portfolio is validated and there's proper governance around change management. Okay, So let's move on to the final phase. Now, 
this is something that people don't really want to talk about, but we need to talk about it because you don't want your clients to leave. Um, quickly, if I may mention this, you know, clients will exit, but make sure that you retain client data in only one database so that it's easy to sort of ensure you keep it for uh, the length of regulatory required length of time. But also when you when the time retention time ends, you destroy it securely. It's, it's critical. Now, to summarize, um, the benefits of APIs. There are a lot of benefits of using technology, particularly in this intense, highly intense regulatory and competitive environment. Um, the benefits are streamlining your operations, approach to regulations, focusing on client, and growing the business. But there are risks as well. Ensuring you have a robust enterprise risk management framework. Policies are in place to meet the to, that cover the latest technology and compliance requirements. And there's governance in place. Train your staff as well on risk management. Finally, the future directions. Now, this is the final slide that we've got. With, with the adoption of technology, wealth managers will need to free, will be able to, I should say, they may need to, but will be able to free up their resources to focus on clients, new products, and be more specialized. Compete on a level playing field with the new entrants who don't have legacy issues and be able to be more transparent with data and advice to clients. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Diraj, um, we, 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 well, we hope everyone has got something out of that and yeah. understanding the entire life cycle of yes. a client in wealth management where APIs can come in uh, and, and also, but also the, the need to manage uh, risk across that entire life cycle. It's a lot of information to share. APIs. Most Thank definitely. you very much for having me. Thank you so much, Alpa and John. And John is around for the whole day as well. In case you yes. have any questions, please feel, feel free to drop your messages and John will be able to answer that as well. Thanks a lot, John. Thanks a lot, Alpa.